that comically big monitor you see behind me right now is the brand new Gigabyte Aorus FV43U. It is about as insane as gaming monitors can get. So let's talk about exactly what you get in this package. And if you haven't seen already, make sure to check out my initial unboxing of this thing because that in itself is also insane. But anyway, what we have here is a beautiful and stunning 43 inch VA panel. And yes, I know that some people are going to be yelling about the fact that it is VA, but it still definitely gets the job done, especially seeing how it is a quantum dot panel. This means that you'll be experiencing some truly amazing colours with this thing. Add to that the fact that it does support up to 10 bits of colour, or more specifically 8 bits plus FRC. Add to that 97% coverage of the DCI P3 colour space, and even this fancy factory colour calibration report that comes with your monitor that shows exactly how it was calibrated. Then you have one really mighty panel on your hands, plus the bezels which are neither offensively big or also the tiniest things in the world ensure that that crisp panel remains the focus. And you literally don't care about any of that. And don't worry, neither do I, because come on, it is a $1,000 monitor, so you would expect stuff like that to be good in it. And I could just sit here and list all the things in as well, but odds are you probably know all these things already just by looking at the price tag. But for the sake of completeness, it also supports HDR1000, which looks glorious on this display, and also supports technologies like AMD's FreeSync, very, very partial G-Sync compatibility, plus adaptive sync as well. That last one is especially important for a 4K monitor like this one, because even with super a high-end hardware, well, there are some games out there that you'll be struggling to even reach 60 FPS, for example, like in Cyberpunk 2077 here, where even on my 10 Ti at 4K, I only play at around 30 FPS. But thanks to these technologies, the game looks that much smoother than it is. It really makes it feel like I'm playing at a much higher frame rate, even though, on average, again, I get around 30. But one thing you may have noticed in all those clips of this display, you may be even noticing it right now behind me, is the glare. Yes, there is quite an amount of glare to this monitor, but it happens both when the image is very dark, or even the whole monitor is off, or even when it's very bright. Though, especially when you're in the middle of, say, gaming, you probably won't notice it that much. Speaking of things that you will probably notice at first, but probably won't notice at all when gaming, let's talk about blur, and of course ghosting, which is also incidentally what most girls do to me. Running the good old UFO test reveals mixed results. For the most part, as you can see, this monitor handles it rather well, but especially when you're running at very high refresh rates, for example, nearing the 144Hz limit of this display, you do run into the issue where the extra frames make the whole thing feel more like motion blur almost. And you don't even need to do the UFO test to see it. Even when you're just moving your mouse around, you will definitely notice a bit of a trail. But again, when you're in the middle of a game, you most likely just won't notice it at all. So hey, I probably shouldn't be complaining. It is a small price to pay for that high refresh rate of 144Hz, though again, seeing how a lot of hardware will struggle to even reach that at 4k, it's probably something you won't have to deal with in most situations. But if you do have the kind of insane alien hardware to run games at 4k 144Hz, then don't worry, because if you want to go even further, you can even overclock this thing to get a few extra hertz in if you want. Now let's talk about actually configuring this display, and thankfully it has a rather well designed menu. You can open up and navigate the menus using this little joystick like thing on the bottom of the display, or you can just slap yourself in the face and instead use the remote it comes with like a normal person. It is way more handy and you don't have to molest the underside of your monitor to get anything done. The menus themselves are easy enough to navigate and have tons of options for you to play around with. Sometimes even too many options and stuff that many players may glance over may be turned off by default, for example HDMI 2.1 support or USB Type-C support. So if those things don't work, then make sure to check out the settings to see everything is configured correctly. Oh, and also while you're in the settings, turn off the aim stabilizing sync. It is useless, and instead it creates this very weird constant shifting of the brightness of the monitor whenever you move your mouse, both in-game and outside of game. I have no idea what it's supposed to do, but it clearly is broken. Another thing that's broken about this monitor is the pricing, but I mean that in a good way, because it costs $1,000, which definitely is a lot, but when you look closely at the step-down model to this, the Aorus FI32U, you'll see that it's only a difference of roughly $100 or so, while other times you could find it for the exact same price. So that means that for $100 or so more than that monitor, you get 11 extra inches 
HDR1000 compared to HDR400 and a quantum dot panel among many other features. That is pretty insane value for just $100 and it makes recommending any of those other 4K 144Hz 32 inch monitors that are very popular right now like the Aeros FI32U, Gigabyte M32U or the ASUS ROG Swift PG32UQ. It almost makes all of those seem like a bad deal. So if you are struggling to get those $100 extra to afford this monitor or if you simply don't have enough space on the desk, that is also very understandable seeing how gigantic and impractical this thing can be for many people, then you could totally still go for one as monitors. But for most of you, if you do have the space on your desk, if you want to go completely overboard and you have that extra 100 or so dollars, then I would totally recommend going with this monitor because it has pretty much everything you could want and is pretty much the end game of gaming monitors. Between being 4K, 144 hertz, having HDR1000, having HDMI 2.1 support, having a quantum dot panel, having KVM support, and pretty much all the other stuff you could ever want, I mean, he totally cannot go wrong with it. But for that kind of price, I mean, that's just to be expected. So I guess this ending depends on how cynical I want to be. On the one hand, I could say, yeah, congrats, Aeoros, you didn't mess up a $1,000 monitor. But on the other hand, I want to say, dude, it's a $1,000 monitor that does everything you could ever want. Just buy it already. And if you do want to buy it, then make sure to use our Amazon Associates links down in the video description below or up in the iCards. Because that way, you didn't pay anything extra while we get some of the money that we can then reinvest into the channel. And it truly does go a long way. Alternatively, if you want to help support the channel in other ways, we also have a merch store and also a Patreon page. Both of which are going to be down in the video description below as well. And I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, FPB, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Comic Age Clothing. Thank you guys so, so much. Support truly goes a long way. Then you're also going to find our Discord server if you want to talk to me or us at this or whatever else, really. Plus, I know the social media links as well. But anyway, that's what it's. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.